The official welcome comes from the mayor of our great city, Mayor Mike Brzezicki. Thank you. Thank you, John. John doesn't need a microphone. That's the difference. Can you hear me back there? Yeah, we can hear you, John. Uh, I want to welcome everybody on this very special occasion on the rededication of this fabulous building. Um, we've got so much to do here today, but before we start, we're going to start it the appropriate way. We're going to get the blessing from Bishop Morton. Yes. Bishop, yes. come on up here. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, for this time, for this moment, and for this celebration. We've come today to give you thanks and to give you praise, for without you, this could never have been. We thank you for the prayers that have been prayed that we might come to this, to this celebration, to this day, and to this joy. We give you glory. We thank you for everyone that had a hand in making this day what it is. We cannot call everybody but na uh, by name, but we thank you from the head to the very last person. We praise you today. You've made it possible, and all things are possible with you. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Bishop. No one does it better. As I said, I am just so pleased to have you all here. Uh, we've been dreaming about this day for a long time, and it's almost a tearful experience to walk in here and see the condition of this beautiful building after almost 50 years. Almost 50 years. And um, I remember the first time I came in the building, <clears throat> and I remember my impression of it, it was, it's just been a long time coming. And we all, dedicate, we all dedicated ourselves to this idea that we were going to improve this building and a bunch of other recreational sites around the city. There are a few folks I want to uh, recognize, some very special people, including uh, a very special former mayor, Jim Baker, who is always... <laughs> I always say when people call out to me, Mayor, I always turn around expecting Jim to be there because he was, you know, he's the guy. Uh, council President, former Council President, Ted Blunt. <clears throat> best looking guy, not the best looking today. Usually he's best dressed today, but not today. He's, he's slumming today. Representative Frank Cook, where is Frank? I, he, I saw him, there he is, special guy. Representative Sherry Dorsey Walker, right up here. Let me tell you how important it is. It's very important to us because uh, I've said often that we have, we really have the best local delegation that we've had in a long, long time. Everybody, all our state representatives and senators who meet with us regularly, just, they've got, they've got our backs. And they really support us. And I can't tell you how much we appreciate uh, you all. Uh, we have our commissioners of license and inspection who, who inspected every little brick of this place. Jeff Starkey's here, really important guy. <clears throat> Chief Bob Tracy and his family's here. Friend of here is. And uh, if I forgot somebody, forgive me. Jeff Lynn's here. Well, so what? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Head of Economic Development, Jeff Flynn is here too. But most important, most important, uh, the woman who makes the city run, Tanny Washington. There she is. <laughs> Beyond, behind every Mr. Outside, there's a great woman, and I got to tell you, I've got one. She does a great job running the city. So let me tell you, um, let me tell you that. Um, when, when I first came in the building, look, it was an old building. It's almost 50 years old, and it was, it was a little tired. But you know what bothered me most about it when I came in here? It was we had a big security gate that sat right here. 
And it wasn't a little security gate, right, Jim? It was scary. It was like, where, how are you going to get past that thing? And it was, the trouble was it, with it was that it kind of reminded everybody of something you didn't want to think of. It just said to every kid who came in here, this must be a dangerous place. And this is not a welcoming place. This is a place where you've got to go through this big Gander Hill kind of thing to get in here. And you know, I made a decision that day that that was coming out. And not everybody agreed with that, but I remember when we took it out. There's nothing to put back in there, but we just took it out and somebody sat there at a desk and the place started to feel a little bit better uh, right away. So I would say that, the, that this project is a symbol of a couple of things. Uh, the first thing is it symbolizes our unconditional commitment to our kids. It says that we are going to invest in our children, not just here, in everything we do in the city. Our kids come first. And there's no way we can, there's no way we can say we're doing it when they come into a place that just isn't up to par. And so not only, not only do we want this evidenced here, but we want it to be evidenced at Eden Park. We want it to be evidenced in all of the neighborhood, uh, the neighborhood parks that we improved this year. Uh, we even want it in Rodney Square. We've got a spray park for kids to come play in, in a place they never played before. So it's just, it symbolizes our commitment to our kids. It also suggests that we don't want our kids to internalize the wrong things when they come to our parks. I want them to feel pride and dignity. I want them to feel that people really care for them. You know, this is as nice as anybody's place. So it's not like they've got to go to another place and say, whoops, they must care for those kids more than me because that's really nice. No, this is, this is good. And we're not finished doing it yet. But so that's the whole idea. We want our, we want our kids to internalize nothing but the best feelings about themselves and where they fit in this community. The second thing is, honestly, I want this to symbolize our commitment that everything we do, everything we do, we want to do well. So if you visited the city county building lately, we've torn apart the old, that old broken down floor in there and, and we're putting a brand new beautiful floor and the place is transformed. And what it says is not, that Przicki wants to spend money, it's not about his ego, it's that we want people to understand that when you see a city building, that there is a sense of excellence and aspiration in what we do. And so we've just got, we've just got what's going to be a beautiful front door to this government. And we want everybody in that government to remind, be reminded every day that that expectation is excellence in everything we do, and that means excellence in the way you operate every single day. Your little job is reflected in the way we, we keep this place. Now I want to introduce the architect of the building that you're going to see if you ever visit, and this place, Buck Simpers, who's here. Buck, go away. And I saw Vash Turner over here, councilman from the district. Councilman Turner. <clears throat> Three years ago, I designated West Center City as the first of our neighborhood stabilization projects. We just had the sense that you can't do everything, but we're gonna go, we're gonna go concentrate on a neighborhood that has a real chance to be strong. And we, we look at West Center City as a, as a part, a neighborhood in our city with all the potential in the world. And so in addition to this building, which is obviously the, the center of all of our efforts down here, we have clean teams that, that come up every morning, <clears throat> not in the wintertime, unfortunately, but we'll have, we'll have clean teams for about seven months a year. And every single morning, they come out and they scour this place from top to bottom. Early on, we had two trash picks up, pickups a week to make sure that we didn't have excess tra uh, trash around our place. We have 50 houses got facade improvement grants to fix up the exteriors of their houses. The housing authority, <clears throat> the housing authority, and the land bank have had assorted houses, rehabilitations all over uh, this neighborhood. So, and, and we, went out, we went out and bought two liquor stores, which are a problem to us. These guys have been telling us for years, Jim Baker and Ted Blunt, they spent a lifetime saying, we've got to get rid of all these liquors. There's something you have to do. And so, you know, 
we can't do everything. We can't do everything. But we got two and we failed to get the third. But I hope we hope we can. Councilwoman Michelle Harley's in the house back here. Hello. Thank you. We have um, we have LED lights in this neighborhood, the first in the entire city. Now the whole city is going to get LED lights, but this is the first this is the first community to get them with smart nodes, so we can do some other things, smart technology to go with them as well. But as I said, the crown jewel is where we're standing right here today. Named after named after one of Wilmington's most iconic figures. I didn't I didn't know Hicks. But it's kind of funny, you almost feel like you do, because they don't talk about William Anderson, William, it's Hicks, you know? And, uh, and so he was best known for his tireless efforts to help underrepresented communities and people needing help, the poor, the undereducated, and the disenfranchised. He dedicated himself to improving the lives of our citizens by fighting poverty and hunger supporting fair housing and improving educational opportunities, a well-worn path followed by Namdi today. From all reports, Hicks was a formidable figure. Jim, not a, necessarily a warm and fuzzy guy, right? He was if you knew him well. He was if you knew him well. But a formidable guy, which is what we need in public life. So I'm going to let uh, Kevin Kelly describe the improvements made to this building in just a minute. But suffice it to say, that our commitment is best defined by the $4 million we committed to this building and things you see and things you don't see, infrastructure, HVAC, because we want a long-term commitment to this building. It's a, an activity center for young and old alike, for ballers and swimmers, dancers and pool players, for boxers and weightlifters. I have every confidence that the team we have running this building will do great work for the community it serves. Now, the guy who has been in at the been at the uh, kind of the tip of the spear on doing all the work on these on these uh, recreational parks, recreational centers and parks, has been Kevin Kelly. Where we've done more in recreational facilities, I think that's been done in history. We've spent the better part of 12 or 14 million dollars on improving everything. And I want to introduce Kevin, but I want you to notice something. This is the only time in history, in the future that Kevin Kelly will be dressed better than I am. <laughs> Come on up, Kev. <laughs> and that's because I'm not running for mayor anymore. I had enough. I'm going to stay with the youngins in this building. But as always, the person at the top always gets a lot of credit for what goes on. But that's not in this case. But just to let everyone know, you know, we put a new roof on, we put a new air conditioning system, we did a new pool, uh, we did a new gym, we did a new floor. We, this lobby here is a result of that gentleman there, Rahim El. Rahim, that's who made this lobby. It's a person, and with Buck Simpers' guidance, who's been here, you know, for a while, somebody from the neighborhood who came back to give back. You know, all the rooms are painted, they're brand new. So now it's up for us to make it work, okay? But you know, what made this happen is guys like Dominic and, and Cotman who just grind and paint and get stuff done. Lenny Safran, Mike who was here every day, the workers who are here tirelessly getting all this work done. Buck, you know, the outside of this building is fantastic. You know who helped make that? Representative Keeley. When she left, she gave me $142,000 to put into that out front, so let's give her a round of applause while she couldn't make it here. But it's just a, it's a continuous effort. We're not done yet. You know, we have the building. You have to come in and be able to use it. But, you know, there's other people who've been, and the staff have put up with a lot. We haven't been able to run a functioning center for a long time. But I'll leave you with this. Young people in the city need three things. Somewhere to go, something to do, and somebody to look up to. And that last person is Wayne Jefferson, who's now going to leave this ship here with this place. So Wayne is the person. I got to give credit where credit is due. 
who's been in the city for a long while, who's run Boys and Girls Club, and un lived in this neighborhood as well, and understands what it's like to be here. So I tell people, it's not the 70s and 80s. That young man there has a different view of what you or I might have wanted to do, and that young lady that's here. So let's work together to continue to make this a great place for everybody to come. Thank you very much, and thank you, Mayor, for putting me in this position, sir. With that, I'll bring up Mr. Jefferson next who's my trusted deputy and now oversees everything, all right? You. You're quite welcome. Go right ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. And uh, first, I'd like to thank the mayor, the staff, Tanny Washington, and uh, Tom Ogden for entrusting me this opportunity to uh, work in dual positions as the deputy director and as the director of William Hicks Anderson Community Center. Uh, last but not least, I would like to thank our staff. Let's give our staff a big hand. Our staff has, has worked tirelessly over 11 months. Some of them had to be to get laid off. Some of them had to get unemployment because we only at times we only had two rooms open. But I didn't want to close down the building because if we close down the building, where are our kids going to go? So we stayed open with two, uh, with two rooms open, sometime the pool, sometime half the gym, you know, but our workers were very important. They stayed here, they stayed diligent. Uh, they, they took the hit of uh, not being able to uh, work the hours that they normally work. And I'm really, truly grateful for our staff here at Hicks. Let's give them another hand. <laughs> In, in closing, uh, I'll just say that this is really, really personal to me. I grew up coming in here. I played here as an adult. I swam in the pool. I played a little basketball in the gym. My son came here. And uh, for the mayor to have this big vision for this uh, part of the city is just it's tremendous. And I'm really grateful. And y'all just enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. <laughs> It's my pleasure to introduce the President of City Council speaking on behalf of our council members, Aniva Shabazz. Wow, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, right? Yeah. <laughs> Won't you be our neighbor? Uh, well, you know, this is a great day and I am so elated with what we see here and, and so many people that came out. Uh, when the CDC came into Wilmington and talked about investigated what was the root cause of what's happening with our children committing such heinous violence. One of the things he said that we must do was to provide a safe haven for our children to play. And for the city to own a community center um, and it to be the condition that it was, it was a safe haven but it's now, it's like home. The children can help here and they can feel like they're at home. It's beautiful, it's state of the art, and it will be populated with staff who are trauma-informed trained and who care for them and have positive youth programming for them to continue to grow and develop. That's what city government does. And Mayor, thank you for working with me on that and making sure that the city itself was an example of what we need to do to provide for our children. <laughs> so I'd also like to thank my council members who, who passed us helped us pass the necessary legislation and approve what was necessary to make this happen. And I know there's much more that we need to get done because our children are our first, vote, our first focus. Our children and our seniors. And we continue to um, build on the build on Wilmington Anderson and the programming that's going to take place here, Mayor, um, and neighbors know that this will be your home away from home, whether you're a young person or whether you're a senior. William Hicks Anderson is your community center. So again, welcome to the neighborhood. So in 1972, they cut a ribbon for this place. And you know who cut the ribbon? Mercedes. Mercedes Fields. You hear? <laughs> and they tell me she was with child at the time when she cut the ribbon. <laughs> and now a. <laughs> I was rounding. I was just rounding. Yeah. 
And now a very, very special opportunity for me to introduce Hicks family. So I want you to meet, of course, everybody knows Anamdi Chukwosha, Representative, Al Mills. <laughs> Two special people. Um, Hicks' daughter, Helen Anderson's here. Helen. <clears throat> and Carla, Mil Carla Mills is not here. It was her birthday yesterday. She went out of town and couldn't be here. But then the most special of all, a woman who has all these kids to her house every Sunday for dinner, and they all go, Mary Jones. How about that? How about that for a story? Every Sunday. <laughs> you have room for one more on a cake? <laughs> So a special treat for me, a very special treat because Anamdi especially has become a really close friend. It's someone who basically everybody in the community has adopted as a very special part of our community. But Namdi and Al are going to come on up and give us a treat, I think, right? Something very special. <laughs> Before we, we shared a poem, just a few things about, I mean, this is, I guess we can say a, a few second homes, but, you know, from, from Riverside and, and uh, you know, our, our sister whose birthday, she just arrived. Thank you for showing up. So our, our wives are here and our, our, our children and we, we, the love we have for, for Western City, you know, like, from, from Riverside, lived in Northside, but we, we live right out this side door, set 706 West 5th Street, when they built those houses. So this, this place, when it was West Center City, was, was a true home to us. We ran around those gyms, swam in that pool, played out there, flag football, softball, everywhere on those fields. So over the years, being our hearts, being in, in youth services, started at the Walnut YMCA's when we were 13 years old, our first job. And so that's all we know is youth services. So this building was a part of our home, Miss Trotter. I don't know if she's our blood relative, but she was our aunt. She, she, was, our, she was our aunt, and, and, and Miss Chambers what, what, what was our aunt. And, and, and Hicks, they were like family members, and they would cuss and fuss back here, but they had a love for, for our children and for our community that is, is, is undeniable, that I don't care where you were, you knew that you weren't alone, that, that those three individuals really signified this, this community. And, and for Miss Chambers Park and Miss Trotter Plaza in the community center named at, in our father's honors, it's a great tribute. Uh, Brother Wayne mentioned the staff here, but I, you, you cannot give enough credit to the staff. I mean, all of those years, they endured and made programming that, that, that met the mark that kept our children safe. I mean, we, we've, I mean, I, I know we're talking about violence or whatever, but we have basketball games going on inside and shootings out front. Kids go out, getting off the school bus, coming inside for tutoring and had shootings out front. So we've endured all of that. And this staff has endured all of that to make this a home away from home for, for our children. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that, that is the hard mark. And I, and I don't know who's saying what, and I know no one likes to talk about the downtrend in violence, but. I know the downtrend and then we, anybody in, in this community every day like I am knows the downtrend of violence and you, you've seen a change in this, this community. And a lot of that is a tribute to, to the mayor's effort, his dedication and commitment to this, this community. And, and that, that cannot be understated. You go to any city, the, the, the Westerner city and the, the closest to the downtown are the most valuable. So this community, he's shown us that we are the most valuable. This investment wasn't a small investment. And he doubled an investment that was put there from the previous council, making this four million. So that, that showed his, his commitment. So I'm just, I'm just thankful that we have leadership in the city that, that, that wants to continue this effort. Madam President took me on a trip to, to Alabama. And we, we went to Bessemer, Alabama, and we seen a community center. And I, I will never forget in it, and, and just like in the old songs where they talk about the black and the white communities were so separated by the train tracks. The train tracks was no longer running, but the communities were still divided. So they built a community center, state of the art, in the, right in the middle of the train tracks. In the community center, they, they created a new tax that pays for it. So every member of the community comes there for free. I mean, it's like Planet Fitness. They got swirly pools, the community rooms, everything inside of there. And we seen that, and we came home, and I, 
saying you know that's what our center needs to look like and and that that's been our charge so i thank the madam president for never forgetting that that that's what we wanted and it's where we were aiming toward But as the as as a, the, a state representative, I also thank my colleagues in the, in the legislative caucus, black del delegation for those inside the city and outside of the city who have continued to support the city of Wilmington for our growth and just ensuring you know, it's, it's one thing is saying representing uh, representative Helene Keeley on the way out the door. I'll say to everybody right now, we have another state representative, state senator, on the way out the door. We need to make sure we don't get to get him on the way out the door because we need a couple more, uh, you know, like I'm just saying. I think you know who I'm talking about. We need to make sure we, 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 we tap that, you know, shake that door before he leaves. But my brother and I have a, a, a poem written in honor of our father. And some knew, Mayor Baker said, when you know him, it, it, it was, you know, a different side of him. You know, he would cuss and fuss, but when you knew that different side of him and that side as family, when, when you seen him come home and, and, and put on a Red Fox record and, and grab, I don't know what, I don't know what whiskey he drank, but he drank a little something brown. And his cigarette, he put his feet up and he laughing at Red Fox and he laughing at Richard Pryor. That, that's the father that, that, that showed us that it was, it was a, a certain commitment to, to not, not just family, but, but community and, and understanding and, and the value of, of what it meant. My father used to say every day after school, what happened in school today? And he want, didn't want to hear, oh, it was all right, how was school, all right. No, he wanted you to tell him how was school. Every day, regardless of what time, what, he wanted to know. That, that commitment that, that we pass on, and it was that way that, that our, our, our family extended beyond our block, beyond our community. And this whole city was a part of what, what we fought for. Brother uh, has a poem, and, and we're going to mix <coughs> these poems together. So, yeah. And I'm sure you say so. Definitely. And I, I just wanted to say, I mean, thank you, tru truly, on behalf of the family, you know, thank you. I mean, it, it, it means a lot, one, to, to, to drive by and see the name, you know, but to see the love, to see these people coming in. And yeah, just yesterday, I mean, a, a lady stopped me and, and gave me a Hicks story, man. And I, if I can tell you all, <laughs> all the Hicks story, man, they, 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 they just touched my heart. I mean, so when it, 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 it's a blessing. And, and my Hicks story, my, my favorite, and you know, I try not to share it, you know, but, but my last memory, the last time I saw my father alive, we were walking down Market Street Mall, and it seemed like every two steps we took, somebody was Mr. Hickson. They, hey, Hickson, we, we couldn't even get to the store, and he was going to, you know, we were, we were going to go, I, I, you know, and we could not get anywhere. We just, I mean, it took forever to get down the street because everybody had a Mr. Hickson. and he stopped and talked to everybody. And then I went into the, I went into the service, and, uh, and he died while, during, while I was in boot camp, so that was my last memory of him that people person that he was, and I love having that as my last memory of him, because I, I, I remember that, I mean, vividly, you know, all the people that stopped, and I was with my girlfriend at the time, and, you know, he was like, well, who's your mom and dad? And he, he ended up, he knew her whole family, and I'm thinking like, what, you know, but that, that's who he was, you know, and he was telling her, I mean, who her grandmother was, and it was just like, wow, man, but that's who he was, and that's who I try to be, and that, you know, that, it's not just, and it's beautiful to see that it's not just our family hiding, holding him in such regard, but my community still loves and loves what he did for us, and it means a lot. So this is a poem called When the, Poems, when the Poem Stops. When the poem stops, I play the role of my pops. Many life lessons we learn just from watching you, pulling over to the curb or walking the streets, just doing what you would do, being the voice for your community, a champion for the children. That's the reason they smile. That's the reason they smile when they talk about you. Put your name on the building. Yes, you were a true champion of the children. An amazing, amazing man. A great legacy. Big shoes to fill. Helping our community deal and heal with so many ills. The work you've done reminds me of no one else. That's why you remain in the hearts of so many. And your name remains in a special place in our city. Your love for the people, for the place that you called home, is still being shown. The way you fought for the city, the way you fought for the kids, your passion, your purpose, your ability to lead and desire to give. So when the poem stops, I play the role of my pops. A leader always trying, trying to do his best, having time to stop and listen, to never sell out or let fame or, or gain change my position 
a worker, a worker for the people, one who never changes. Year after year, Hicks was committed. His commitment remained the same. That's why your name stays on the tongues of many residents in the city that knew you best. You were zero tolerance, you had no time for that mess. And I've heard a thousand and one Hicks stories since you passed. Some make me cry, others make me laugh. You were always for the people, and most of all, you loved the kids. And it seems like you knew everyone, and everybody knew you. It seemed like every block we were on was like our own block. It was like you had family in each and every block. You were on a one-name base, just hicks with everybody. You were shaking hands and smiling faces with everyone from the kids to the grands. Looking at you, man, you was just a man. You was all man. That's why you're respected in our hearts. Your passion, your purpose, the community love, the movie nights, the parties at Prices and Speakman Park. Weekend after weekend, you brought the community together. You showed us how we could be better and do better. You were more than just a friend, an advocate, a mentor, a militant, a father figure, a coach, an ally. You were more, so much more than just a neighbor next door. You were Mr. Hicks, the one to call on when your time of need for sure. You were a true man of his people, not above but equal. Much, and there's much work still to be done. Makes me proud to say I'm your son. And the mission continues. And Hicks, we all working with kids. In the city with the city that you love, trying to do the work that you did. So when this poem stops, I play the role of my pops. Giant shoes to fill, helping the city deal and heal from its ills. So Hicks, I'm glad for you. I'm glad to say I'm your son. Thank you for everything for the city and all that you've done. And I, un unfortunately, my brother and I touched base about the title, so he told me and I never wrote it down, so <laughs> I wrote on legacy. So it's the same theme, but mine just says your legacy. I changed my name to honor your legacy. Anamdi means that my father is inside of me. And I love those moments when you come out. See, it wasn't just your methods or your message. It was the way that you would give it. It was just real, it was the way you lived it. It was your truth, it was your sentiment, the way you helped turn gangs into social clubs that are today nonprofits and civics. That's your legacy. You were an umpire. You know all the rules to the game. Fought against busing because you knew that our schools would forever change. That was your legacy. And your legacy today is me walking into a school and I happen to flip over a president's principal's desk like you did. <laughs> Not flipping over a desk, but still fighting to tell the teachers and administration that they, they know that our children also deserves their best. Your legacy is the legislation that we're crafting to do what you and Ms. Beebe, to see what you and Ms. Beebe wish you could see for our children, to make it into reality. That's your legacy as we fight for a fair and equitable district. It's not about the color or the student in the desk sitting next to me. It's a Wilmington district, a Wilmington-centered district alignment with the resources and support behind it. That's your legacy. Your legacy is doing anything you can to save our youth because it's only one side to the truth. And when we felt that we were prisoners in our own community, you fought for our city, you fought for our unity. When Wilmington was the place, when you didn't have to lock your doors at night and you still felt safe. In the days when Hank Aaron and Willie Mays, when our city was set ablaze, that was the path upon which your legacy was made. From ball fields to boardrooms, when there was racial tension in our streets, you met with the police. You met with the mayor, you met with the police chief and the president of council, and you helped to create the Citizens Advisory Council. That was your legacy. You always focused on what was real and what was relevant, loved our children and focused on community development. 
That was your legacy. Your legacy, you showed the projects how to act. Hmm. Hicks, it's your legacy, the difference you made. This is the village that you raised, how you changed the direction of our city with the love you, you were given, creating a new generation of leaders with your vision and your commitment from Larry Carter and Jay Street, Dennis Williams and Maurice Pritchett. That's your legacy. What you gave to our community can only be described as love and unity. From community meetings to Title I sponsored PTAs to weekend long softball games, it was you. Following a tragedy, we followed your community building strategy and we marched and we fought for an overpass so that children dying trying to cross Governor Prince Boulevard is now today a thing of the past. A true voice for the voiceless, you made a difference any way that you were able demanding a place at the table. That's your legacy. Know how to put, and you knew how to put people in their place. You were our community's face. You understood the role of race. Just ask Joe Biden about the role that Wilmington played in his first senatorial race. <laughs> it's almost 30 years from the day that you passed. And, and I will still never forget that deep, hearty laugh. Sticking me and my brother out in the outfield telling us that if you drop that fly ball, I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> yep. My father had a way with words. That's how he talked. That's how he walked. You were our village elders with Ms. Trotter, Mr. Ernie Webster, Ms. Chambers. I can never forget those men, the Kingswood men in them green and yellow jackets, guiding us, avoiding the pitfall and distractions. Your legacy, your legacy is more than just the name on this building. It's what you put in our hearts, our love for our community and our children. Thank you. Everybody ready? Here we go. We're going to count down. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Come